Hello everyone, I'm the ramp maker Jim McIntosh and today we're making a snake bracelet. Hello everyone, I'm the wrap maker Jim McIntosh and I am back again on Jewel School to show you another project and this is one of my favorites because it's a really interesting bracelet that I called the snake bracelet and I call it that because the way that it's shaped, it kind of wraps itself around your wrist. Now, the really cool thing about it is it can be a bracelet that goes around your wrist. You can even make it so that it goes on your upper arm, something a lot of people love doing. So the, this one is going to be a really, really great project. To get us started, let's take a look at all of the tools we're going to need for this project. Now your wire comes on a spool, so we're going to need a really good pair of flush cutters to be able to cut the wire into lengths. We're also going to need this. This is wrap maker pliers, and these are, these are great because they're going to make the job of wrapping, uh, making all of the wraps, and you're going to make a ton of wraps on this. It makes it very easy and quick to do. I also like to use painter's tape. I, I use painter's tape kind of as a second pair of hands. It keeps everything, all of my wires in one place so that we don't, things don't get crazy. And of course, I'm really weird about my painter's tape, so I always cut it off. Some people tear it off, but I, ooh, it drives me crazy. We're also going to need a fine tip permanent marker. This, this is great because it'll mark the wires as well as we're going to shape with a, uh, a rawhide mallet. This is going to be used, and we'll use this along with this, this guy right here. This is a bracelet mandrel, and this is fantastic to shape those bracelets with. So this will be essential. And then, of course, last but not least, we've got to have something to measure all of our wire with. So we're going to use this as our measuring tool today. Now let's talk about the wire. For the wire, we're going to need 22 gauge square dead soft wire dead soft wire please don't get half hard this will make your job 10 times harder if you do so dead soft wire and also we'll have some 21 gauge half round wire and this is a, a really this is going to make all of our binds we're going to use this to bind all of our wires together it's also going to be great uh, as we go down the bracelet We'll be wrapping that in, into place as well. And then you'll also need, last but not least, a cabochon. This is going to be the snake's head. So this is a nice cabochon. It's a 25 by 18 millimeter cabochon uh, for this. You can use a bigger one, but for this, this, for the first time, I'd prefer you use the 25 by 18 so we can get all the measurements correct. So the first thing we need to do is we need to determine how much wire we're going to need. And to do this, I just have just a very simple method of doing this. I'm going to pull off about four inches of painter's tape. And I'm going to cut a thin sliver off the side of it. And this is going to go around the cabochon and it's going to tell us just how much wire we need. So let's it's also going to do one other thing. It's also going to allow us to figure out uh, where we're going to be placing our wraps. Just something visual so that you can uh, make, all of your, make all of your wraps in the, in the right side. So take the tape. We're going to start at the top of the cabochon. This is the, the narrow end. We're just going to adhere it and go around the outer edge of the cabochon and where both of the the tape ends meet we're just going to trim off that excess and so this is where we're at we have these we have this kind of at the top and now we can mark out where we're going to place the wraps so but to do that we're going to use a fine tip permanent marker and we're going to go so here's the tape ends we're going to go opposite that so that's the bottom of the stone and just make, just make a line to give you an idea where the center of the stone is. It doesn't have to be exactly on the center, but this is just a, a reference for us. Now to the left and right of that center mark, we're going to make another mark about a quarter of an inch away. 
And that can be adjusted depending on the size of your stone. If you're using a bigger stone or if you're going to be making something with a larger stone, you can certainly make a longer uh, wrap for that. So we've got two marks there. So that's going to be the bottom, or actually in, in this case, it will be the, the top of the head. And, and that'll all make sense here in just a minute. So let's go to the other end. We're going to do basically the same. We're going to use the where the tape ends meet kind of as our center line. And we're going to go to the left and right about a quarter of an inch and make a mark. Okay, so that is where we're going to make our wrap. So now we can take this off and we can adhere it to our work surface, just like that. And we'll have three sections right here that we are going to wrap. But to figure out how much we're going to need, we need to measure the tape length. It should be approximately two and a half inches. This is about two and three quarters. That I'm, I'm gonna use two and a half because it's much easier to do math that way. So we're gonna do two and a half inches. So this will give us, this gives this measurement here, gives us how much wire we need to go around the cabochon. So we're gonna double that, so that we're gonna bring that to five inches. The other measurement is the wrist. Uh, now, you need to measure the wrist of the person who's going to wear it. Now, for this case, we're going to use seven inches, a seven inch wrist. So take a tape measure, measure the wrist. We'll use uh, seven inches. So we're gonna double that to 14. That gives us wire to go around and then make our bracelet. So 14 inches plus the five inches gives us 19 inches of wire total for this project. So that's the number we're going to go to. We're going to measure and cut, and we're gonna cut four pieces of wire at 19 inches. Now I have a 12 inch ruler, so we're going to kind of make this up a little bit as we go. So find the wire end, there it is. Now this is the 21 gauge square wire, and it's gonna make up the frame for this entire piece. So let's cut four wires at 19 inches. A little traveling music. This was 12. Then we'll go up here to what, seven? No, we'll go to five, so there's one. Now the painter's tape is gonna help us, this is a lot of wire, so it's gonna help us manage <laughs> how much we're going to be using, because this is, this is, this can be kind of a mess. All right, so we've cut all four of our wires at 19 inches each. Now comes the fun part, we gotta straighten these guys out. Now I use my fingertips to do this, this is an awful lot of wire, and we're going to use a bunch of tape to kind of hold everything together. Uh, but you want them relatively straight. They don't have to be perfectly straight. But we're going to straighten them. You can use a cloth for this. You can use nylon jaw pliers. I see a lot of people that do that. Uh, and to, to straighten their wires out, whatever you're more comfortable with, I've just... have done this for so long that I'm, this is my preferred way. So we've got all four of them relatively straight. They're not perfectly straight. Now before we get them all together, I want you to take some painter's tape and I want you to cut about six little pieces. And we're gonna use these as flags. So I always kind of tape them to my work surface. Let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna cut, cut about six of them. And these, this painter's tape is gonna really come in handy to keep everything where you want it because this is going to be kind of, a, kind of a mess if you don't. All right, one more should do it. And if we need more, we can, and you can use as many of these as you want. You can use eight of them if you want, uh, if it makes you feel a little more comfortable. So let's take all four of our straightened wires and we're going to line them up at one end Line them all up so they're even. And you want them squared up next to one another. And this kind of takes a little bit of doing, but patiently put it all together and you can do it. So I'm going to 
make sure they're all squared up. You don't want one of these on its edge because uh, it will affect every part of this project from uh, once you start wrapping, if you've got one of these on edge and it will drive you nuts trying to figure it out. Okay, so I got them all squared up. I'm gonna take a piece of this painter's tape and I'm going to put it across all of the wires, bring it around and tape it to itself. There, now I've got a nice flat area. Now from that flag, I want you to run your fingers up and in about three inches from that first wrap, or from that first tape rather, I want you to put another flag. So there's two, and then we're gonna keep going. From that, we'll keep going down. And you'll notice as we do that, all of the wires are starting to come together and they're starting to act like they are nice and even. Make sure that you don't put them on edge as you're going. Or not, so another two or three inches, let's see. We want to make sure that we keep the center open. And we can remove a piece of tape if we need to. Uh, but the center is what we're going to mark everything up. Now, like I said, keep this center area open. So we're going to go past that center area. We'll put another piece of painter's tape. And then from there, keep moving down the wire. To, we're going to do this until we reach the end. We're at the, right at the end. I'm going to keep doing that. One last piece. And this is going to keep everything right in place so we can work on it. So you've got six pieces of tape. Now we may need to move one of these center ones, uh, but you want to go back and kind of, kind of make sure that everything is together and not on edge again. And this is, this is, only happens when you have this much wire. Also make sure you don't have any crossed over because I just now noticed I've got one crossed over right in here. All right, fixed my mistake. Okay, so this is a whole lot of wire, but as we work with it, it's going to all come together. The first place we want to make sure that's nice and smooth is this center section here. So just make sure all the wires are, are together. And now we need to measure to find the center of this. So from one end, I want you to measure down the wire half of the wire's length. So we had 19 inches. So we're gonna go nine and a half from one end. So line that up from one end at nine and a half. Let's see, where we go. There's nine and a half. And I'm just gonna mark that with a fine tip permanent marker. That is going to be our center line. This center line, we're going to line up with the center line that's on this tape. And then we're going to transfer all of our marks from the tape to the wire bundle. These are our wrap areas. And these are going to be a guide so that we can make sure, see now look what I did right here. See, I have a piece of tape in the way. So now we have to remove that and move it a little bit. but. So we can put our mark. So let's just make our mark and then I'll retape that if necessary. Okay. All right, so our wire has three wrap areas. These are the areas that are going to be wrapped and this will be more understandable in just one second. So let's grab our 21 gauge half round wire. Now when your wire comes off of the spool, the wire has a natural curve to it. Now this curve, the inside of the curl, 99.9% .9 of the time is the flat side of the wire. So that would be the inside of the curve. And then the half round side or the domed side is on the outside. So let's make sure we, we cut a piece of wrap wire. This is 21 gauge half round wire. And I am going to need to put, I'm going to need to put one more piece of tape on here. Because you see how they see how these are spreading. That's what we want to avoid. There we go. All right. 
So we're going to start with the wrapping this center wrap right here. So we're going to use our wrap makers. And these wrap makers, they've got a long side of the, uh, the jaws and then this short side. The long side is going to hold on to the wire frame and the, the shorter side that we're going to use that to hold on to our wrap wire. So line up that long side of the jaws just outside the area that you want to wrap. And if you just add, just put a little bit of pressure on there, you're going to notice it's going to flatten your wires out. And that's another good thing. It keeps these wires nice and flat. Take your half round. And when you, when you do this, it opens a gap in between the, the, the jaws. And that's going to allow us to add this wrap wire in. So insert that wrap wire on the sh opening on the short side until it bottoms out, until it doesn't go in anymore. And then give it a squeeze. Just give the handles just a slight squeeze, and that will allow you to start to make your wraps. So about every four wraps, I want you to stop, and we're going to set the wrap. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. So there's my fourth one. So we're going to take the pliers off, and I just want you to give it just a squeeze. Just squeeze that wrap, and then you can just re-hold on. You don't need to put the wrap wire back in, but you can hold on to the bundle and just keep wrapping. And we're going to wrap until we get to this other uh, far side of the center. So we're just going to continue wrapping until we get to the other side. And like I said, about every fourth wrap, I want you to just kind of set it in place. And this is just making it so that it does not shift or move on us. It's also going to help hold all of the uh, frame wires in place so that everything doesn't spread on you. Okay, so there's our, our last wrap for this center piece. And notice I started and I stopped on the same side of the wire. I'm going to trim it on this side as well because this is the inside of the piece. It's going to go up against the cabochon and it's going to hide that end. So let's trim it. I always trim these about half the width of the frame. And make sure you hold on to your cuttings as you go. You don't want to you don't want to shoot one of these across the room because uh, they can become volatile. And then we just want to make sure we take our wrap makers and push down those ends into place. So since we set that, see this isn't going to move. Now we're going to wrap these outside two, uh, two areas here. So grab some more wrap wire. So wrapping these outside areas is exactly the same as we did in the center with one slight change. We're not going to set these two yet. We're going to use that to be able to center everything on the stone. So just wrap them uh, and Make sure you do a good wrap, but it does. you don't want it so tight that these don't move at all. All right, so we're just going to set the wrap makers just outside of where we want to start our wrap. And we're going to take a piece of half round wire, flat side against the piece, if I can get it to spin around. There we go. I'm going to insert it in until it bottoms out. Put a little pressure and then start our wrap. Now, I'm... You want to make sure that however many wraps you make on this side, you do the same thing on the other side. So make sure you count how many wraps you make. So that's one, two, there's three, four, five, six, and I'm going to make one more. I'm going to make a seventh one because that's how I always do it. So we've got seven wraps on this one side. Just like the other one, we're going to trim it about half the width. We'll trim the, the starter side. And you can, once you get these trimmed, the, the, the wrap ends are going to be kind of up a little bit. You can just kind of push them down with your thumbnail till they're even with the rest of the wrap. We're not going to set that, but we want to at least push it down. Now we'll do the same on the other side. We're going to wrap this side. 
And take your time with these wraps. The reason why I say that is because you've got a lot of wire out here and it kind of makes this unbalanced a little bit. So just kind of take your time to make these wraps. Don't get too, too critical with how it's going. Just do your best, take your time. All right, here we go. Four, whoops. See how it has a mind of its own? Five, six, and one more. And then trim it. And then push those wire ends down so they're even with everything else. So there, we've got three wraps on here. Two that move, one that doesn't. This piece should start getting a little more stable. All right, so now we've now that we've got this uh, these wraps, we don't need this uh, on our work surface any longer. We can move that out of the way. And what we need to do is we need to shape this around the cabochon. Now, the little trick I have for this to hold the stone steady is, I told you you're gonna use a lot of painter's tape. It's another piece of painter's tape. And you're gonna use so much of this painter's tape that you're gonna have pieces of it all over your studio, on your elbow, or on your shoe. But just take that a piece of painter's tape and just tape, tape your cabochon to your work surface. Now it's not gonna really move anywhere. And this gives us an opportunity to be able to to, to bend this around. Now, we said we wanted the cut ends on the up against the stone, so that, that's what we want. We want to make sure we take that, uh, the center one with the cut ends up against the stone, and just bring each side of it around the cabochon, and we're making kind of a horseshoe shape. So you can kind of bring it in a little tighter by hand. Now, the trick on this is you want to make sure this is centered. So you notice my uh, wrap is a little off center. And it's just the trick to fix that is just to take your wrap makers and just kind of bend the whole thing in the direction you want it to get it to go center. So I just had to do just a little bit of an adjustment. And it's good to do the adjustment now as opposed to when you're almost done and you realize that it's not centered, it'll drive you crazy. So we're done with our cabochon for now. Now comes the next little tricky part. We're going to have to take some of this tape off. We're going to have to move our wires into place so that they form a nice cage around our piece. So I'm gonna take just a couple of these off. Just, I'm gonna leave leave the end ones on. I want just a little bit of area to work. Now this is going to take just a little bit of extra effort. The reason being is we've got we've got all this tape that's on and it doesn't want to move these wires. So this is going to distort just a little bit, but we can fix that. This is dead soft wire. We're going to grab the, the back wire and we're going to grab it right up against this wrap, the center wrap. So we'll grab one wire and we're going to twist it toward the center. So let me show you what I mean here. Let me get it moved. See, so I just bent that towards the center of my horseshoe. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This is creating the back. So I'm gonna grab one wire. And if you have a hard time seeing that one wire, you can take uh, take like a, a, a knife, like a paring knife, and just put it in there and kind of separate that one wire so you can get your pliers on there. So I've got both sides bent towards the middle. I can make this one a little bit better. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. There we go. All right. Now that's going to hold the bottom of the stone. We want to move these also. These so. 
holds the top of the stone as well. So just below our top wraps, just do the same thing. You're going to bend it. Bend that wire towards the center of the stone. I'm going to bring this guy down just a little bit. There we go. And then one more bend. So we should be able to take the cabochon and put it in this, and it will hold it up just like that. So with the cabochon in, we're going to do the front. Now, this is where you can do whatever you want to do at the top of this stone. But the front of the stone is what everybody's going to see. So you can make it look as much like a snake head as you want. But I'm just going to grab my fingers, my, finger, my fingernail, grab the wire, and pull it towards the center. You can, use, uh, you can use your wrap makers for this if you want. I'm just going to make just a simple little design, maybe just kind of fix the design all the way with wrap makers to give a nice Just look at it until you're, until you're happy with what you've got. Must have moved something out of place. So let's adjust that just a little bit. And there we go. So now the front of the stone is held in. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to move these top wraps till they are above the stone. And we're going to find the place where they, the tops of these wraps touch one another above the stone. So we move these till they're just above the stone. I got to move these guys down. We just want the tips of these to touch at the top of the stone in the center. You're going to have to cross your wires over one another and then just kind of bring them together above the stone. So we want these tips right there to touch. Once we figure out that they're centered, where you want them and adjusted, we're going to then set these. That's why we leave these to set them until towards to at this point, because it helps us be able to center everything on the stone. So now we should have everything centered and we can continue on. So we've got our wires crossed over one another. We're going to take our wrap makers and just above, just above the wrap, we're going to push it out because we want to push the make these go together. So I'm going to push them outward just like that. And then I'm going to bring these together. Now on the, the pendant project, I always call this grabbing the bunny ears and bringing the bunny ears together. And I have all kinds of silly things I like to say about it, but this is what we want. We want to bring these together so that they're these four and these four meet up in the middle. And we're going to take another piece of painter's tape. Go figure. Another piece of painter's tape. We're going to hold both of these sides together. We're going to add a wrap right here. Now you can make this wrap as short or as long as you want. I'm going to grab one of my samples. This is kind of a fancy one, but this is what we're going to be making right here is this, this long neck. You can make this as long or as short as you would like. I'm, I'm going to make kind of a short one. I'll show you on this one. This one is a little bit shorter. I would say this one's probably about three quarters of an inch long. And that's what we're going to go for. So we're going to grab more of our half round. You want to get a pretty good size piece of half round wire this time. So I would say work with a, with a uh, probably about a nine or a 10 inch piece. So we've got a pretty good size piece of wrap wire. We're going to start wrapping this, this neck on here. And since we've got twice the thickness of the, the wire, the wire frame, we're not going to be able to put the wrap makers on there and have uh, be able to use this smaller size wrap wire. So what I do is I go off to the side. I hold this top, one of the top wraps. That, that's a little bit larger than what we're going to be using, but this will give us enough space. So hold on to that and then insert your wrap wire flat side against this, the uh, wire frame. And then you're going to grab it and you're going to go kind of off to the side just a little bit. We want to just wrap this neck together. And you go as long, I'm going to go about a half inch, three quarters of an inch. I'm not going to measure, but I'm going to eyeball it to about a half inch. And you 
you push it down so that it's meeting up with these top wraps. And every few, just go ahead and set that wrap once you got it where you want it. And then continue wrapping. So we've got probably almost a half inch here. I'm just gonna make a few more wraps. There we go, that should be good, right about there. Now this little piece that we started with, we wanna kinda of hide this. And I always hide this end in that space we made right here. So I always kind of push it through the, the space there and I grab it and pull it through. And I push it towards the center where the two sides come together so that it looks like all of the other wraps. Almost, just gotta kind of finagle that guy in there. There he is. And then I'm gonna trim it short so it's inside there. That's a good thing about these flush cutters. I got a nice point to them so you can get in there. And then just kind of set that guy inside there. And you may need to use maybe some chain nose or some, some other kind of small, thin plier. But I just want to make sure that it's got something to hang on to there. So that's kind of hidden away. It's not going to scratch anybody. Here comes the scary part. You're going to say, what are we doing? We're taking all this tape off. Yep, I want you to take all of the tape off. We're going to start the longest part of this entire project, and that is wrapping the body of the snake. There. To do that, we need to fan these out. So starting, and notice I haven't, removed this side. I want this long part here. We're going to incorporate that into the body. So just start separating each side. So we have four and four on each side. This kind of takes a little eyeballing. If you look down the top, you can see which one you've got in the wrong place. I think it was that one. Yep. Okay. So I got four and I got four on this side. And we're going to bring them one at a time back to the center. So we're starting at the front. So here's the front of my stone. I'm going to bring these in to the center. One there on each side. And then we're going to line up the next two right next to these. So that one goes there. And what I'm doing is I'm flattening out. I'm transitioning from the way that they were all lined up this way, I'm gonna bring them all so they're lined up this way. And that's going to flatten this out and give you the bracelet that you need, the bracelet feel that you want. So I'm just kind of springing these back together. Be patient, straighten your wires out. So you said, no, now notice the transition. I've got a transition right here where it's, they're all coming together and now they're all flat. And once you get them flat, you get to put more tape back on. So flatten them out. So we've got another piece of painter's tape. I'm going to go a couple of inches away from where my wrap ended. And I'm going to go across all of the wires and I'm just making a little flag. And that's going to keep that flat. Now, we're going to wrap pretty much this entire piece. We're probably going to go just a minute after we start wrapping this, after we get past that transition, we're probably going to go seven inches of wrap wire. And you're not going to have enough wrap wire for this. And I'm going to show you a trick to, to fix that. We're going to splice wire in. Now, I don't know too many people that do this, but this has saved a lot. A lot of people, when they're wrapping this, they like to keep the wire on the spool. And I, I never, ever, ever recommend that. I'm just flattening these out again. 
I never recommend keeping the wire on the spool. And here's the reason why. It's half round wire. It will flip as you're going and you won't even notice it until you're two inches past. So never use it on the spool. So we're going to continue wrapping and the, we want to make sure that we're doing kind of a loose wrap in this transition part because this, these wires are going to have a tendency to want to come back together and bunch up and we don't want that. So I'm just going to wrap this till I get past that. See, it's already doing it. See, so let's just undo it just a little bit. Make sure you're nice and flat again. And then just add some more wraps till you get past that transition. The, this thing is already strong enough as it is uh, with the, the wrap wire, the neck part of this wrap wire. So these wires, them being a little bit loose, doesn't make it much of a difference. Okay, so now we're beginning our the flat part. Now I'm right at the very end of my wire. So I'm going to end it on the back. I'm going to fix some of this. There. I'm going to end it on the back and I'm going to trim this kind of short. So I just got just a tiny, tiny little piece here that I'm working with. This is how you splice wire in. Let me pull some more wire off. So I've cut kind of a long piece of wrap wire. And we're going to do this very much like we've done all of these other wraps. We're going to use our wrap makers. We're going to go where we want to begin the wrap. Now here's where I ended the wrap right here. I'm going to go outside of that. And I'm going to start my next wrap outside of that. And then we're going to move it into place. So insert your wrap wire. And I want you to make probably two or three wraps. So I'm going to wrap around this. And, and we want to kind of bring these wires together a little bit. So there's one. There's two. So notice how I kind of pulled those wires in. There's three. I've got three wraps on here and it brought these wires together again. Now all of these are going to be hidden in there, but we definitely want to make sure they're flat. So how do we splice it in? Well, we're just going to move this so that this is where we our start wire. We're going to move it until it's opposite the wire we just trimmed. And then we'll cut this so that it is opposite of that last wire that we set. See, so now you've got, this is the new wire starting there, and there's the old wire here. You might not be able to see that, but from the outside, you will never be able to tell. So make sure you move it into place, get it nice and in place, set it really well, and then continue your wrap. Now be careful. The last thing you want to do is pull all of these wires in so that they all bunch up. So every few, you want to set it. Just make sure they keep them flat. And we're going to just make a couple more wraps to start this. Now, how far are we going to go? And that is the big question. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure down this piece and make a mark that's going to be kind of our home run mark. So what we need to do is we need to measure down this piece and kind of give us an end mark so that we know how far we're going to make these wraps. This piece I said we're going to make seven inch bracelet. So I measure from the center of the stone and I've got it on the back. This is the back of the stone. I've got it. Put that the, the zero here in the center of the stone. And I'm going to go all the way down the wires to seven inches. And then I'm going to make a mark across these wires. This kind of gives us an ending point so we know where to stop. And if you want, now you can kind of bring all your wires together and add another piece of painter's tape. So I'm just going to bring all of my wires. I'm going to start from my tape part that I know is flat and I'm just going to bring all of them up to where my end mark is and then just beyond that end mark 
I'm going to put a piece of painter's tape across everything. Be sure that you did not cross anything over. You will know if you cross something over by how it starts wrapping. So I'm just outside of there. I'm putting my painter's tape on. That, that makes it a little more, a little more secure and easier for us to wrap. So now we're just going to continue wrapping. We're going to from here all the way down to here. All right, so we're at that point right now to where we need to splice in another piece of wire. Now, I am only cutting the lengths of wire about nine inches long, so it's manageable, so we can wrap it much easier. We're not gonna twist the wire, uh, and this, is just, this just makes this job so much easier when we do it that way. Uh, it takes all that aggravation out. So let's splice in the next piece in. I'm just going to put it in to the wrap makers, push it until it bottoms out. I'll start my wrap, make about three wraps. Two, that's number three. And I've already trimmed this short. I didn't push it down though, but I've already trimmed my end, the end of my wire short. So now I'm just going to bring all of this down, put it into place and then set it so it doesn't move on us. And then we're going to trim it off. And you'll do this, if you're cutting wire at about nine inches, you, we're probably gonna do this about four, four or five times on this piece. And I know that seems kind of silly, why don't I just do it a different way? This is the easiest way of doing it, plus it's the most manageable way of doing it. So let's continue wrapping. All right, so I've come up to the painter's tape, so I'm just gonna remove this piece of painter's tape. If you want, you can stick another piece on just a little bit further, and I probably will do that because I'm gonna use a recycle a piece. I'm gonna use another piece here, and I'll tear the end off, but I because I don't want the, these crossing over one another. All right, we're gonna finish this up. We just got a couple more wraps to go. Now this is very time consuming, but trust me, this is worth making uh, because it is one of those pieces that people just love to see. So there we are, we're right at seven inches. And we're going to cut this and remember, we're on the inside of the, of the uh, bracelet. Trim that short. And if you look back, you'll see I've got how many splices I put in. I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven splices in there. 
And the splices uh, are going to be the most helpful thing that you can do because it's going to make wrapping manageable. So just make sure that you've got all of these kind of pushed down. I always like to kind of pull some of the gaps out if I have any. There. And there you have it. So that's what where we've got. This is our the bracelet part of this. So now we can form this around the snake. So let's get our bracelet mandrel and we'll start with that. Before we can we can do this, we want to shape the neck. Now you can use round nose pliers. I can I usually will use my rat makers and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend it in one direction like this. This is going to be the neck. Now if I made this neck longer like on that other piece that I had, I made this. See all I did was just kind of bent it around a couple of different ways before I uh, I uh, finished it. So that's the that's the neck. Now we're going to form it. So all you want to do is put the head on the uh, bracelet mandrel. You want to kind of hold on to your bracelet mandrel. You, you don't need to, we're not going to do any heavy pounding, but we're going to work this around. So we're just going to bend this around and we're going to bring it to the opposite side, just like this. So we're not, we're going to kind of cross them over one another. Now this is not the final size. This isn't the size we're doing. And the good thing about this is it's very malleable wire. So it, it'll move if we want it to. So holding it kind of together, I want you to take a rawhide mallet and we're just gonna just give it tap around, around the, the band of the bracelet. This is going to kind of set it into place better uh, for us. So it's gonna spring a little bit, but it's gonna kind of set this wire in this shape. should have a, got a pretty good shape there. So we can bring this in more. Now something, they always make these bracelet mandrels round. And I don't know anybody that has a round wrist. Everybody has an oval wrist. So I'm just going to kind of move this around and bring it into the shape I want with my fingers. Just doing this a little bit of time. You can also use a ring mandrel. It's much smaller. You can use that also to kind of form it. But the bracelet mandrel just gives us kind of a starting point. Adjust the head how I want it. There. And I'm going to kind of bring this. See, now notice I brought it into an oval shape. I want to straighten that up a little bit. So I've got an oval, and now we've got the tail. So let's take off the tape. The tail's the fun part because you can do whatever you want. Look at all of this wire you have to play with. I'm going to go opposite with this, and I'm going to just make some curls. I'm just going to make them with my, my fingers. I like to just make a curl, and then I just line them up next to one another and uh, into a design. You can do whatever you want at this point with yours, but just play around with it. Kind of come up with just a some kind of an idea or, you know, well, if you start with something and you don't like it, well, you know, start over again. You know, these are, these are happy little trees. We'll call them happy little trees, just like he would say when he was painting. Let's keep going with this. We go. We can even bend them a couple at a time into place. Let's see. Let's let's bend all of them, then I'll fix them how I want. So I don't know quite what I want yet. The important thing is to 
that you want to move these in such a way that they're not going to hurt anybody. They give a nice design to the piece. And then we're going to trim off some of this excess wire. So I'm going to start, start here in the middle and trim some of this off right here. I'm going to trim it kind of at an angle. Let's start, let's start with an angle first. Now bring them in towards the center like that. See, I'm just maneuvering these just with my fingertips. Then let's keep going. Trim just a few more here. Now, if you find that these ends are scratchy, you can take uh, a jeweler's file, just a flat jeweler's file, and just file those rough edges off. And, uh, and make, just make sure it's safe to, to be worn. It doesn't hurt anybody. You know, remember this is, this is art. This is not anything difficult. We don't want to throw a temper tantrum through it. Just take your time and make your design. This guy right here I don't like. This last one, he's too short. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna remove it. So you can just take your wire and do this. There, got rid of him. All right, let's do just a little more trimming. We should be pretty close to done here. Kind of this flare. All right, I could sit here for four hours playing with this stuff, but I think everybody gets to the point. I'm just going to kind of stop here because you can get to the point to where you're just going to drive yourself crazy trying to make this go. There you go. Eh, I can deal with that. Let's kind of trim some of this back now. Let's do that and that. So there we go. Just a nice simple little bracelet and let me show you the other one see now look on this one i kind of took the tail and i curled it into itself and that's a that's a good way of hiding that i also did some weaving on this i added an extra wire to the top to kind of give it a ridge on its back all the way down the length but that's the final piece i hope you guys enjoyed this project as much as i did this is a great bracelet to make people love to see it it's it's always that uh, eye catcher for everyone i want you to remember that if you need any of the supplies or any of the tools that we used in this be sure to check out the links below in the uh, description it's going to take you right over to get everything you need the right supplies for this project i'm the wrap maker jim mcintosh and be sure to like subscribe and hit that bell ring the bell below so that you don't miss any of the videos on jewel school and i'll see you again next time and i want you to remember practice 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 <laughs>